Hey everybody, thanks for clicking that thumbnail and welcome to Talking Habs and this is my first ever uh, episode of Questioned and Highly Answering. I'm going to do uh, some Q&A, so I'm going to take viewers' questions and I'm going to answer them right here. And uh, so if you want to have a question answered, uh, just leave a comment in the comment section of this video and any of my other videos, just leave any comments, leave your question and I'm going to gather questions that I do get that way and I'm going to put them in the next video. So if you'd like to be in that video, hey, leave a comment. So uh, before we get to that, of course, there's always the before we get to that. If you're new to the channel or uh, you haven't subscribed yet and you want to see some more Habs content, Habs videos, live streams, all that kind of stuff, uh, subscribe. Bring that notifications bell and uh, th that'll get you your daily fix of Blue Blonde Rouge right here at Talkin' Habs. Um, feels a little weird doing a video like this. The only way I do sitting down like this anymore is when I'm doing a live stream. So f doing a video just seems weird. So you might notice there's a bit of a new look to the set. And um, yeah, I hope you enjoy that. And we're going to get right into uh, videos. So uh, like I said, it's called Questions. So that's questions from uh, the audience. And highly answering because... We get high while we answer. So, hopefully everybody doesn't mind. And there you go. We're going to get into the first question right now. And that is by a subscriber. You know, some of these, I don't know if you're a subscriber or you're just a viewer. So, I'm not going to call it subscriber um, uh, questions because sometimes I don't know if you're a subscriber. So, there you go. Outlier. So that's outlier with a, it's, um, oh, I was going to say it's like uh, saying they're a liar, but uh, I got it wrong. So outlier. Um, and this is on the uh, uh, Pierre-Luc Dubois rumors. Then I'm also going to include something from Jerry Confi and Archer123 because they're talking about the same subject. So here we go. So uh, outlier says, um, on the question of who would you trade to acquire Pierre-Luc Dubois. He says the three amigos, and I don't know why he calls them that, but uh, KK, that's the Asperi Koganyemi, Armia and Mete for PLD. Jerry Confi says offer them KK and Byron, and Archer says the same thing, but he adds uh, plus as many picks as they want. Um, so I'm going to tell you why I don't agree with that. <laughs> so I've done a video already about talking about um, whether or not we should go and try to get Pierre-Luc Dubois, especially they're talking about Suzuki, uh, KK here, Deneau, uh, any combination of the three, uh, plus Caulfield and this one and that one and Prospects. Okay. There's a bunch of reasons why this isn't going to happen. First of all, uh, for Suzuki, not happening. For KK, I mean, I could see KK being the guy involved if this trade were to happen, but it's not going to happen. Uh, and when you're offering KK, Armia, and Mete, you're giving back a little too much. And here's why. Um... Columbus is not in any position of leverage. I don't know what the, the other term. They have no leverage here because they. Uh, it's obvious they need to make this trade. The player has come out and it's uh, let it be known that he wants to be traded. And uh, he's he had a goal today, though, uh, but uh, he hasn't been playing very well up to now, and it could force their hand even more. Once you have that happening... You're not in much of a position to demand a lot, really, right? So to saying that, well, we want Suzuki, it's kind of too much right there for, like, if Montreal needed to make the trade. It's a different story because then you can demand more, but they can't be demanding that. So offering up all this much is just way too much. If you're going to say KK straight up for Dubois, maybe even like a third or fourth round pick to go along with that, I could see maybe doing that. Problem with that is uh, the next problem is you got to clear some salary to do that. He's making five million. KK's making uh, under a million on ELC right now, so it doesn't clear enough room on the cap to allow PLD to even join the team. So that's not going to work. You have to send back some salary. So then you can look at it and say, "Well, what about the Byron? KK and Byron pretty much give you." Um, the 5 million, I mean, pretty much it's close. They are 700 under the cap right now. So they, that would be the 5 million. You could say that, but again, you're giving too much. You're giving too much for the guy you're going to get from a team that has no leverage. You're giving them like, you're the one that has no leverage. And I don't think that's going to happen. Third option or third, uh, problem here is the quarantining. So we trade for... Dubois, our guys go there. So say it's, uh, we'll just go with KK, Armia, Mete. Just as an example. They gone, 
Dubois on his way here. He's got to quarantine for 14 days. So we got to wait for Armia to finish his quarantine while we also don't have KK, Armia, and Mete on the team. And now you're really screwed. 14 days could be, literally could be seven, eight, nine games. It could be depending on what part of the schedule. And um, I don't see how that works because now your playoff hopes kind of get kind of get thrown out the window because without KK Armia Mete and no Pierre-Luc Dubois in the lineup, I don't see what kind of success you're planning to have, not in this year, in this division that we're in right now, the competition level, the rivalries, I don't see that happening. And I, I, I really cannot see um, Marc Bergevin even considering this right now. This is an off-season type of move. If we're going to get Pierre-Luc Dubois, it's going to happen in the off-season. Point for now. I do think he's, there's other teams that can offer more right now and I won't have a problem like an American team. Uh, I can think of the Rangers offhand. There's other teams. So I don't, I don't know. The competition is heavy, I think, on this. Except that, like I said, Columbus doesn't have a lot of leverage here. So, Okay. I have, a, um, I, I, I have another question I might have even answered. Okay. Uh, George Sesford. On the same subject of uh, Pierre-Luc Dubois, if we add an expensive player who needs to go into quarantine, does that not provide us with 14 days of cap relief? Would it not be an obvious benefit to gain over $6 million, uh, in cap space by moving Byron, Deneau, Tatar, and Norlander? Again, it, it, it speaks for what it looks. Uh, you're taking now Byron, Deneau, Tatar off the team. And you're getting back, I guess he's talking about getting back Pierre-Luc Dubois, because if you add their salaries up, minus the five million Dubois makes, you're left with just over six million. So I'm assuming this. Um, so again, you, you don't have these players playing for you, and you don't have Dubois playing for you. That kind of kills it right there. And yes, though, you, you're right. If we do trade Dubois, well, the time he's on quarantine, I do believe we're saving the cap space. So that's happening. But we don't have a player of any of these guys' quality to replace on the team so that we don't go into a horrible losing streak. So, yes, while you're right, we get cap relief from it. It still doesn't make the deal any more sensible. Next up, Paul Surrett. Uh, Brian Burke said in the, in the broadcast last night, so I am, I guess he was writing this on, um, Sunday. I'm filming this on Monday. He wrote this, I guess, on Sunday, and he's talking about the game Saturday night. Uh, so on the broadcast, the in, in intermission. Um, he said uh, that the Habs are his pick to win the division uh, and the team to beat. Okay, well, hopefully she got that out of her system. All right. So Brian Burke thinks that the Habs are the best team in the North Division and the team to beat in that division. Uh, so he's asking, really, why is it so many other pundits don't see don't see that? Uh, they're all talking up the uh, Maple Leafs, uh, the almost all of them the Maple Leafs, uh, maybe the Flames. I mean, but they're not talking up Montreal. So why is that? So my answer quickly is this, and I think it's it, it's kind of I'm trying to make fun, I guess, but it's kind of the truth. Um, they're bought and paid for. Simple as that. They're bought and paid for. I, I guess that's not really funny. Uh, they're bought and paid for by the organization they work for. So TSN, Sportsnet, um, you name it. I mean, they're bought and paid for. Most of these head um, companies' headquarters are out of Toronto, and it's all Toronto centric. And these guys work for that organization that you're watching, and that organization's line is sell them the, this line of crap that Toronto's the best team in this division and they're by far they're the best skilled and the this and that and the this and that and the, uh, ah. it's it's all a bunch of garbage and um not to say Toronto isn't a good team but they're not by far the best team they're not going into this the Stanley Cup winner uh, they're going to be very hard pressed to even make the playoffs so um yeah I think it's simply they do see it but they're not really allowed to officially go out and talk about it. They have contracts. They have to kind of toe the company line. It's like that. That's why, I mean, who would want to work under those conditions where you don't have really the right to say completely your own opinion? And you got to suck up to um, the corporate uh, sponsor to make them happy. And 
whatever. But that's, I think that's what it is. They all talk it up about Toronto, and I don't think all of them feel that way. Sure, some of them probably do. You know, I, I just don't see that everybody would. So that's what I'm saying. Zenith Gaming. Um, I guess this was on my last live stream. He says at 2 hours, 46 minutes, and 50 seconds. Is this a joint? You mean like this? Yes. Next question. On that, it goes out. Desjardins Le Talec. Um, so I wrote this question. I took, pulled this question out. And um, <coughs> I think you'll see why. Um, well, he responded. Okay, so I answered him on this, on a comment. And then he responded to me after. And uh, I'll tell you what he said. Well, I don't, didn't write down what he said, but I'll tell you how he responded. So he writes, after the first game, the Toronto game, uh, get rid of Price. Save us nearly $10 million a year. Uh, he's let in five goals again in the first game. Now, Desjardins has been kind of on Carey Price's case for a while. Uh, him, Morgan Burton, you're guilty of that too. So these two guys especially, and I don't think Morgan, you know, Morgan's not going to be mad at me, I hope, for, for pointing this out. But these two guys especially really want to see Price gone. Um, now, I commented to him that uh, something about how, you know, uh, his comment didn't, didn't, um, didn't age well, something like that. I don't know. I made a bunch of these comments on Twitter as well. I don't know which one that was, but basically saying that you couldn't be more wrong. And uh, he he wrote back saying that after the second game, you know, he he gets it. Price had a great game and all that, blah blah blah. And he just finds that he's been not as good as he should be and all that. So he's kind of saying that you know he doesn't necessarily want Price uh traded he just wants the price that hasn't been living up to his name traded but not the one that played against Edmonton that's a long way to say that exactly that so um yeah I mean price not getting traded uh, uh like there's there's a lot of people you know it's just because of the money let's put it this way. it's because of the money he's making 10.5 million if price was playing making seven million nobody would talk about that Nobody would, right? Even in his bad seasons, nobody would talk about that Price is, is killing his team because of the salary, but he's making 10.5. So you got certain expectations and all that. He's not getting traded though. He has a no movement clause for him to be traded. He has to agree to do it. That's number one. He's not getting picked up by Seattle in the uh, expansion draft because for that to happen, he has to agree to do that. I think Quite frankly, Carey Price likes what he sees here in, in Montreal right now and what's coming down the road. And I don't think that he's going to waive his no movement clause. So, no, he's not getting traded. And he showed in the second game that he had a bounce back. Now, he, will he do that tonight? No, because Jake Allen is, is announced as the starter tonight. So if you're seeing this on the day of the, which is really going to be cutting it tight because I'm filming this late, um, Jake Allen starting the third game. So, you know, we'll find out. As the season goes, whether Price is dialed in, whether giving him a rest is going to make a difference and all that stuff, I do believe it will. And no, Carey Price is not getting traded. Anthropologist. Um, does Paling have virtually no value at all anymore? So he's asking, is it Ryan, Ryan Paling? If people aren't sure who Paling is. Ryan Paling, does he have any value? He had a ton of value coming into last season. He had that concussion in the uh, training camp, threw a season off. He had a bit of an attitude problem after being demoted to uh, get back into shape and get into game shape and all that. And um, it's kind of been, I wouldn't say downhill exactly. He didn't have a great stint in, in Laval. It was okay, but it wasn't great by any means. Um, I don't know that he's ready yet this year. I uh, haven't seen uh, enough of him in the training camp and he's on the taxi squad now. So I don't know when we'll see him. Uh, yeah, his value is quite, is dropped. His value is dropped. If they would have traded him in the off season, if they would have traded him maybe at some point during last season, I don't know, but his, his, his value is dropped. Um, I don't know about virtually no value. You're not gonna be able to trade him on his own to somewhere and get any kind of a return, but he can be put into a package. Um, he's only 21. He's no, he's not a bust by any means. And, uh, yeah, but his value is down. His value's down. He's going to have to do something solid and show something for his value to, to come up. That's my opinion. 
Um, we get into the hard ones here because Alexander Huang, uh, or Huang, I'm not sure how that's pronounced. Um, on the Habs Leafs um, review video that I did. So on that, I, I know I shouldn't be doing that. You're probably hearing me rubbing the microphone. I apologize. I, I'm going to find out when I replay this that I, like an idiot, I'm playing with the microphone. I apologize. Um, you think the Leafs were the better team? Because I had said the Leafs were the better team that night. Just barely, though, I said. And what I really meant by that, because he says, do you think the Leafs were the better team? The Leafs looked slow. What I really, really meant by that, by saying just barely, is that they won. They won, they're the better team. But you're right, they weren't the better team. I probably shouldn't have said that because it didn't really reflect me saying, I should have just said, well, they won, so that's all that counts as far as that goes. But no, they weren't the better team. They're not the better team going into this season. They're not the better team during the season, and I don't think they'll be the better team at the end of this season. So um, yeah, sorry. I really just meant that they won the game so that's how I look at it. But you're right, the Habs were the better of the two teams. Now, here's the real brain busters for this. And they come in by uh, Goalie Girls Rule. If you know who Goalie Girls Rule is, Goalie Girls Rule. And I said it three times now. Is that like Candyman? Is it going to show up soon? No? Goalie Girls Rule is uh, my podcast partner, Jeff. Uh, Jeff, Jeff Head, you might see him out there as that. Um, so he's asking... Some hard questions. Um, who are you keeping? One has to go of these three. So who are you keeping? So you can only keep two out of Cole Caulfield, Phil Deneau, and Thomas Tatar. And that's like, okay. I think, though, it sounds harder than it actually is. And here's why. In my opinion, right? I need a puff before, though. Okay, here's why I think that's not a, as hard a question as you might think. Maybe for some it is, but I, I don't know. As much as I want to keep Thomas Tatar, as much as I think Thomas Tatar plays here in Montreal probably better than anywhere else that he's going to go to or that he's played at, um, I kind of think it's Thomas Tatar that has to go because I don't know that you can sign Thomas Tatar, number one. Thomas Tatar probably can pretty much be replaced by Cole Caulfield. Cole Caulfield has a shot that could make him an elite goal scorer. That, yeah, Tatar's definitely a steady 20, 25 goals a year. You almost know you're getting that from Thomas Tatar. Pretty much 25, it's like you, you know it, right? Um, Caulfield can bring you maybe 40. And um, um, yeah, I. I I think Phil Deneau might be the guy that people say here in general, but I think Phil Deneau is going to get signed. I think Phil Deneau is an important part of this team right now because of the experience level, the fact that we don't have anybody else who can really guarantee that you go in the face-off circle and you got a, the best shot to win. That's Phil Deneau. We don't have anybody else like that right now, so he's invaluable right now like that. Um, yeah, I think it's, I think it's going to be Thomas Tatar. Um, there's not one of these three guys that I want to lose off this team. Uh, so it's a, it's a really difficult question, but I think that's what I think. Um, in the comment section, let me know what you guys think. Um, now, here's the hardest one of his, and it's the last question. Would you trade Price next season if Primo was ready for the NHL, giving you Allen and Primo as your tandem the next two years? Edmonton could sure use Price, and Price may agree. Well, I'm going to answer this first in two ways. First way is this. If Allen's selected by Seattle in the expansion draft, problem solved. No need to even ask the question. And this is a possibility that Allen could be the guy that, get, that Seattle picks. I kind of, I, you know, honestly, I kind of don't think so. He's, he's what... Uh, in, uh, in his, uh, I think he's a 32, he's in his 30s, he is, um, he's not your best starter. I mean, this is not a guy that really is a starter type. He is a really good, solid, uh, maybe a great backup. So I don't know that Seattle goes after him. It'll depend on what's available to them in goaltenders other than Jake Allen. But if Jake Allen's selected by Seattle, don't have to worry about this question. Um... 
I, I'm not so sure that Price would agree to go to Edmonton. I know you can say, well, he just said, he just actually said today or yesterday that McDavid is the uh, best player in the, in, on the planet, the best hockey player on the planet right now. Maybe you can think that means that he'd want to go play there. And maybe he does. I don't know. I'm not inside his head. But, um, and Edmonton definitely could use him. I'm not sure. Um, it's a damn good question. Thing is now, if Allen's traded, then that's before trading cap happens. So we don't know if Primo's ready then, right? So we don't, not traded, but he's picked by Seattle, right? So we, but we don't know at that point, is Primo ready yet? Um, I'm going to doubt that Primo could come in and be sufficiently ready that we're going to bank on him at a time when we're really shooting for a cup, that we're going to bank on him to be the starter and that's going to take us there. So I think I'm going to bank on that aspect of it and say, no, I would not trade Carey Price based on the fact that all the moves we've made um, going into this season, the fact that it looks like Montreal is going kind of all in in the next two, three years to do their best to win a Stanley Cup, I think trading Carey Price just doesn't make any sense at that point. So I'm going to say, no, I would not trade Carrie Price um, in those conditions. Uh, there you go. So there you go. There's my first ever uh, episode of Questioned and Highly Answering. Uh, my first ever, well, it's actually my third ever Q&A uh, video. I did a Q&A video probably a year ago. I did, I think, two of them. So um, I recently saw some people doing these again, and uh, one in particular really got me going for this. So thanks, and you probably know who you are. And uh, thank you. Appreciate that. And uh, for giving me the push to do this again, kind of. You didn't give me the push. I just saw it and said, hey, I want to do that again. I actually been thinking about doing uh, uh, viewer questions again. Uh, I didn't get a huge response the first time. So uh, we're going to give it a second shot. Uh, so there you go. Um, babbling on. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up. Leave any questions for future episodes in the comment section or in any of my videos in the comment section of any video, leave a question. I will find it and I will put it in the next video. So there you go. Thanks everybody for watching. I really appreciate it. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up. Let me know what you think in the comment section. And uh, what do I normally say here? Um, I, uh, yeah, if you're new to the channel or you haven't subscribed yet, please subscribe, ring that notifications bell. That's gonna get you your daily fix of Blue Blanc Rouge right here at Talking Habs. You'll get notified for these kind of videos um, and my live streams because I'm going to be live streaming every Habs game uh, for the season. So you might want to get involved in that. And um, so if you see this early enough, check it out tonight. We're doing the second Edmonton game tonight. And I say we, I do that all the time. And I don't know, I don't see anybody here unless somebody under, unless I'm talking about my dog. Maybe. Okay, thanks for watching, everybody. Really appreciate it. Stay safe out there. Peace out, y'all. See you on the live stream. See you next video. Bye, everybody.